Let's talk about BT Internet and why you shouldn't entertain going with them as a provider of uh, either internet services or definitely email addresses. Let's go through it. Having been a BT Internet customer since approximately 1994-95, could have been earlier actually, anyway, a long time ago, and then building my own house in the sticks, which wasn't a great idea if I wanted internet because nobody would be able to provide good internet to where I was, it was so far away from the exchange. But I stayed with BT because there were no other options. And if I'd have gone with any other provider, basically because they were on the same wires, it, the speed would have been the same anyway. So, stayed with BT. Then as technology progressed, about three years ago, um, before Elon Musk Starlink really got going, I figured out that I'd probably be able to get faster internet if I went with a mobile provider. Um, so I had a look around me to see which sites were local, and it turned out that Vodafone, who I was already with on mobile, or four mobiles, they could provide me with a SIM card that did data only for less than I was paying for BT with a fixed landline. So obviously I went with that and I went from a download speed of around about 20 and an upload speed of 2.5 to a download speed which is now around 150 and an upload speed of around about 80. Can't complain at that. But that's not why you shouldn't go with BT. As I say, with regard to anything through the wires, you'll get the same speed no matter who your provider is, unless it's Virgin which use different ones. So BT always gave me excellent customer service, can't fault them for that, and there's a lot out there that are marked down on the poor customer service. But two things have made me absolutely despise BT, and this is what they are and this is why you shouldn't use BT or you shouldn't get into the grass of BT because this will bite you on the arse. Even though I'd been a loyal customer, paid them thousands of pounds since 94, 95, when I came to cancel my contract with BT um, and I had four email addresses, all important email addresses that I'd been using for years, everybody knows them, everybody sends emails to them, BT said, or you can't continue to use those email addresses. Well, you can, but only on a basic premise. And what that meant was, I couldn't use anything like um, Microsoft Outlook to sign in and synchronize all the folders, all the new email, all the deletions and everything. Couldn't do that. If I went with basic, which would admittedly cost me nothing, all I could do was log in online and just deal with that particular inbox at that time. I couldn't use it with anything that actually organised my email in one spot, but more importantly, saved everything, deleted everything and put things into folders. And that was really, really bad. So what BT made me do, because I couldn't just get rid of those email addresses, I could put things onto my emails for a few weeks saying, uh, this is my new Gmail address, this is my new Outlook address, those type of things. But people have been contacting me for nearly 30 years on these email addresses. Everybody knows them, it's what's stored on the phones, it's what's stored on the PCs, so it would be an impossible task to do. And further down the road, I know that I'd miss emails and probably really important emails. So the only option that I was given was to pay $7.99 a month for the premium mail, which basically means that I can use it like a normal email address, I can put it into Outlook, everything gets synchronised, and for that privilege I pay $7.99 a month. Not very good BT, not very good at all. And that's really bad, but it's probably not the thing that annoys me most about BT. BT internet annoys me most primarily because I like to travel, I travel all over. And every time I travel, every one of my email accounts gets blocked. And it doesn't just get blocked and all sign in and we'll send you um, a four digit passcode so that you can enter and unlock it. It gets blocked and I've got to go a circuitous route to change the password. And when I change that password, it's not just being changed on my phone or on the laptop that I bring away with me. It's then got to be changed on the two PCs when I get home. It's got to be changed on my wife's phone. It's got to be changed on everything 
that I've viewed my email on and that is an awful lot of devices, tablets, etc, etc. It is one of the biggest binds of going away and I've tried everything. I've tried not signing into Wi-Fi in hotels, I've tried using a VPN. Nothing works because basically when you're abroad, BT will block all your emails. Yahoo used to be the provider of email services and then about five, six years ago, BT thought, oh, we'll save money, we'll go out on our own. And that's roughly when it started. So not only did the email become worse, um, um, there were lots of things that changed because they got rid of all the Yahoo back office. So lots of things changed and it was atrocious. And in all honesty, they've never bothered to make it as good as it was originally. That's one thing. The first time it happened, I phoned BT from, I think it was Thailand or Bali. It could have been one of numerous places. But I actually phoned BT and it cost me money because I couldn't access any of my accounts. Because when you're blocked, it doesn't actually say, do this, this and this. It says, go to this website and it'll tell you what to do. But it doesn't tell you what to do. Actually, what you've got to do is just log out and then try to sign back in. Uh, but the email that they send you telling you that it's been blocked sends you to a website that doesn't give you any accurate information at all. It, it's, it's disgusting. BT, I can't begin to tell you how deplorable your email is. Anyway, moving on. So I phoned BT up, let's say from Thailand, and I was on the phone to them for about half an hour, and they were saying, oh yeah, just, just log back in, and it'll do this, and it'll do that, and change your password. And I'm, I'm trying to explain to them, I have no reason to log back in and change my password. Nothing dodgy has happened on this email, so why have you blocked it? I did what they said, I logged in, changed the password, changed it on my phone, changed it on my PC, changed it on Catherine's phone, and then it'd get blocked again two days later, three days later. So this went on through the whole of being away. When I got back to the UK and I spoke to them, they basically said, if you sign into a hotel's network, the free Wi-Fi that they offer, uh, we think that, you know, because so many other people have, have logged into it, uh, that you're a scammer and you're gonna be sending out lots of emails. So I said, well, why can't you just ask, why can't you just send me a code that I've got to put in to unlock it rather than me changing my passwords on all the devices? And I said, no, we can't do that. Anyway, this happened time after time, every time I went away. And I contacted them, I said, this is absolutely disgusting. You can't run um, an email network like this. It, it, it's just inoperable. And they said, well, that's just the way it is. And I'm away in Bali now, and exactly the same thing's happened all four email accounts, they've all been blocked numerous occasions, I've had to go in, I've had to change the passwords. Anyway, cut a long story short, if you are thinking of going to BT, please don't. The services is really good, can't fault them for that. The speed of the network is the same as any other provider. Um, but you will get locked into their email system. Once you get a BT email, so at beatinternet.com, at beatinternet.co.uk, whatever that is, you are saying, this is going to be my email address for life. And every time you go abroad, it's going to be blocked. And it's not just going to be blocked at the beginning of the holiday. It's going to be blocked throughout the holiday. It's atrocious. It's the worst system that I've ever known. And I have complained, I've escalated it, but I just keep being told, hey, that's the way it is. We're not gonna change it just for you, Mark. But it isn't just for me. I know this happens to everybody that's got BT email when they go abroad. And it's not just hotel Wi-Fi systems. I've been in three villas while I've been in Bali this year. So there's nobody else signing into them. Um, there's only BT addresses that are signing into them. It's only my family. Yet in every one of those villas, on numerous occasions, I've been blocked. So, don't get BT internet. If you're gonna get BT internet, use an Outlook email, use Gmail, use anything other than BT email addresses. It's a huge telecommunications company that hasn't got a clue how to run their email system. Their email portal is pathetic. The email security is pathetic, don't use BT email, take a tip from the top.